Hi, so they asked me to talk about tools. So, you know, basic everyday tools that I use and I'm doing three, four ATMs every week. So there are certain items that have, you know, come bubbled up to the surface and these are the ones that I use. All right, um, first off, I paid 350 bucks for this bad boy. And uh, the little ones that you can get, you know, that are in a straight line versus this angle, or the little rotor hammers that are drilled trying to be a rotor hammer, they will get you through the first one, the second one, and then they're done. Go ahead and spend the money, get you with the right tool, and I've done hundreds of machines with this and until I gave it away and went and bought another one. It was a Bosch. Okay. But you can get other brands. I like the angle style and I'm looking for the SDS, which is this is this is a real rotor hammer. This is not a drill motor trying to be a rotor hammer. The other thing I've done is you can buy these bits and this particular one Milwaukee makes and it's double fluted as opposed to the older style. Between this and this, they go through the concrete like butter. It's just so much quicker. It doesn't jam up when you're trying to drill a hole. I use the half inch pins, the, the wedge anchors. So you drill, you drill the hole, you push it down in with the hammer, I leave the nut and the washer on as I put them in and then that way if I accidentally miss with the hammer I can still get the nut on and complete the task. Once you have the pin in, as you turn the nut, it pulls the wedge down and it anchors it into the concrete and it ain't coming out. They're good for about 5,000 pounds a piece. You buy them in Home Depot, 20 to a box, they're like a dollar a piece, it's five dollars to bolt down a machine. They're all Phillips screwdriver. Buy you a nice high quality $20 screwdriver and last you a lifetime. Um, I mean all of these machines, there's all about Phillips screws. Um, I have my little uh, 110 tester. Uh, I got to find power somewhere. I don't want an outlet that's wired backwards. I don't want an outlet that doesn't have ground. Um, so my little $5 tester that I can buy at any hardware store is a good tool to have to test power. I found the short handle, biggest sledgehammer I could find in a short handle, so that ends up being a three pounder. Uh, there he is, it's all about physics, so the bigger the hammer, the least amount of times that I actually have to hit that pin and drive it in, the fewer chances I have of mushrooming the end off and it and gets the job done quick and, and instead of with a little, I had a claw hammer, I'd be there, you know, 20 minutes with it. With this, it's, it's three or four strokes with the hammer and it's in. Have an impact. It's an old school electric one. Nowadays, uh, some of the boys are using uh, the battery operated ones and they do just as well. Uh, for that pin, it's a three quarter deep well six point socket on a half inch drive. Um, if you don't have that, then there's the same socket and just a good quality ratchet. If you don't have that, there's the one size fits all. I was just talking about this little cord that we found and this is a good little trick tool. So this end of it will plug into the power supply on the ATM and this end will give you power. So you can use this for your wireless when you've got to plug in the power supply so everything stays in the top of the machine. The other thing I use it for is I'll plug it in and then I can go ahead and plug my drill in here. I can plug my impact in here and just do it all right there at the machine. It just helps me be faster. So you're going to have some Cat5 because it's not always going to be there for you. So we carry a little assortment of 25, 50, and 100 footer depending on how long it is. And then couplers. Sometimes you will get there and it, you end up being just a couple feet short and you can use the coupler and now you can put two cords together. Kind of limit your overall length but you know that basic internet stuff. We can show you in programming a machine, how to see that you have internet. Uh, otherwise, if you're unsure, well, I have a little adapter for my Cat5 cable that goes on my uh, little pad, and then I'll just go to Google and search for a couple of things, or go check my email, for some, and I know I have internet. You have to verify that you have internet. All right, so one of the other tools I have is just a piece of uh, half-inch black pipe, gas pipe you buy at the store. So there, when you remove a machine, because we're using these wedge anchors, you're left with about this much of it sticking up out of the concrete when you leave. And so we try to be good about it. We don't want to leave a trip hazard behind. 
uh, or we're relocating a machine somewhere, there's two methods. One is you take the hammer and you beat it this way and you beat it that way and you beat it this way and it'll snap off. And the other method is in your top and corner and you can't get it, you can put this over the top and then you can go back and forth until it snaps. Then you take the hammer and you push down the last little bit, it's below the surface of the floor, you leave no, tri no trip hazard. When you drill, what I teach the guys is that in most all places, not every place, but in most all places, concrete slab is four inches thick. We use a six inch drill bit. As you're drilling, you should feel it break through the slab. If you feel it break through the slab and then you put these anchors in and you have to go back, you know you're good. Just drive that bad boy all the way down in through. But they didn't drill all the way through. One or two taps, it's going to stop and now you're cutting it off and then it's still going to stick up a little bit and you're still going to have that trip hazard. So in the end, even though you're going to be able to do that, I still prefer bust it off, whatever's sticking above the concrete, and then when you go to tap it down, you know it's going to go down at least a little bit, get below the surface of the floor, again, leave no trip hazard.